<laughs> All right, guys. So uh, Real Estate Growth Academy, this is session number 12 of our 12 week, uh, 12 week growth mastermind. Uh, some of you guys have been joining us consistently for the last 12 weeks and uh, contributing, masterminding and stuff like that. So I'm excited that we've got this far and uh, we're going to go ahead and end our mastermind group at week 12, maybe take a little week off and then kind of regroup and see what we're going to do next. So I definitely want to keep something going. So I'm going to want to get some of you guys' feedback too on, on what would be valuable for you guys. But uh, as always guys uh, with our mastermind, um, be vulnerable, speak the truth, tell us how it is so we can best help you out. Um, pay it forward. That's the thing we ask, right? If you have anybody out there that needs help, pass on the information. There's a lot of people struggling. So that's what this is all about, collaboration and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and kick it off, guys. Um, I guess, is there anything uh, specifically this week that you want to talk about? Any hurdles in your business? Anything that's working really well that you're noticing? Um, that we can share and kind of piggyback off of. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and go. Um, I think something that really has been working for us is just uh, staying consistent with following up with our SOI uh, and also just... Um, any, any new leads that we get in also, you know, getting on top of those as soon as they come in. But I'd say most importantly would be just that follow-up, you know, cause sometimes a lead will come in and you talk to them like one time, maybe twice. And then you kind of, since maybe they're not ready at that moment, you kind of just forget about them and you're looking for that, for that new lead. So for us, it's been nurturing some of the existing ones that we've had and just keep following up and, and dripping on them. Um, I had on Saturday morning, uh, someone from my, my SOI called me up and said, Hey, Jose, we want, we were thinking of, or we want to sell our, our home. I uh, want you, you guys to sell it for us. And we're looking to buy something else. Um, so that's, you know, from someone that I've, you know, been kind of dripping on here and there. And so now the kind of the fruits of that labor kind of come into to fruition a little bit. So if anything, I would say just being consistent with with the follow-up and especially like your, uh, your SOI. Cause I feel like whatever, you know, we're, we're posting on social media or I'll do like an email newsletter, like once a month, uh, someone else over the weekend said, Hey, you know what? I thank you for the, your email or your updates of homes that have sold and that kind of thing. So even though people may not be reaching out in the moment and saying, Hey, I want to sell or I want to buy or make a comment on your post, like people are still watching. So it's probably good just to keep you top of mind. So if anything, I would just say just to keep keep doing those things and, and following up with, with those people. Yeah, that's excellent advice. Um, <clears throat> I like that you're bringing that up because that's probably where a lot of agents lack, right? Is a lot of times we're looking for, we're looking for like we send out an email and then someone responds and, hey, I want to sell my home. You know, when it doesn't always work that way, it's the consistent follow up and staying top of mind and just being in front of them. And eventually when they're ready, then they'll raise their hand, then they'll reach out to you. Right. In a yeah. perfect world, you know, you put a post on social media and a bunch of people could call you and say, yeah, let's, let's buy or sell. Right. That's, that's just not the way it works. Um, and especially yeah, that, now, it does work like that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does work sometimes, right. If you get lucky, but, it doesn't always work like that. Right. But um, especially now, right. Like things are changing now, right. Like what, what happened a year ago to now we're in a, we're in a different place now with, with you know, COVID and things reopening. So as things change in the world, people's needs change. Right. So as long as you're there, you know, to, to, that they can turn to and they know you haven't forgot about them, then they're going to reach out when the time's right. Uh, we were talking about that this morning on our morning huddle that there's leads that came in, you know, a year ago and now they're finally like, Hey, let's do something. All right. Um, anybody else want to chime in on that or expand on that? Uh, and just to add on that, like answer, answer your phones too. When the phone calls come in. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I agree. I, with the social media, I've been posting more and every time I post, 
I, I do get some type of response, you know, a DM. But what I've noticed is even like when I'm hanging out with family and friends, you know, they, they have that conversation with me like, hey, that was motivating or that was, uh, you know, informational where, you know, or it's motivating them to even post for their business. So, you know, I, it goes back to, you know, I, I think for me, again, my biggest challenge was that it was, it was uncomfortable, a little cheesy, but then for me now, what I see is that you are definitely helping other people that you don't even know that you're helping, right? Just by, by putting yourself out there, making yourself vulnerable. And, and again, it's, it's again, you know, I've been doing real estate and mortgages for the last 18 years. So it's selfish of me not to share my knowledge, not to share what I've been able to accomplish. And for me now I'm getting comfortable doing that and, and I'm getting some really, really good feedback. And again, maybe it may not even be just direct business, but it's from other business owners or other family members, nieces, nephews, where now they're looking up to what I'm doing and asking me, you know, asking me questions. You know, I had, I had my son ask me this question. He said, Hey dad, what's your net worth? Right. I'm like, Holy shit, man. Like where, where'd you, you know, where are you coming up with this? But he hears these conversations that I'm having with family, friends, business, you know, he's in the car listening with me. And it's like, these are the these are the things that we need to start teaching our family and friends to start asking these types of questions and this this social media social media platform allows you to do that so again for me it's just getting getting comfortable with doing it and and again it, it you, you can definitely impact people around you so it's definitely something positive And I think guys, especially like in the Hispanic community, right? There, there's a lot of lack of, um, not just Hispanic, just in minority community, you know, in general, uh, there's a lot of lack of information and knowledge out there, right? Um, there's a lot of probably our family members, you know, that don't know a lot of this stuff, you know, of how things work, how real estate works, what it takes to buy a home, you know, what, what how do you get your credit score up, things like that. So I think just coming from a place of contribution of uh, trying to educate people and, and, you know, you're going to get people that eventually are going to want to do business with you and you're helping people at the same time. Right. So um, I just think, I think we all have a responsibility to do that. The more that we know, the more that we have to give, right. We have to put it out there and it'll come back and it'll, it'll you know, come back tenfold in the long run. Um, one of the things that I wanted to, to talk about um, was yesterday we had, we're about to roll on this uh, Zillow Flex. We're getting launched for Zillow Flex on uh, July 28th. So we got accepted into the Zillow Flex program. So it's been a whole onboarding process and training. And we had our orientation yesterday with our, our growth advisor. And um, one of the things that really stuck, stuck in my head when it came to, was uh, getting credit for your work. You know, he, he talked about how you know, one of the big things that Zillow requires is for you to track your, your progress with these leads that they're going to be giving us, right? So when we book an appointment, you have to go into the app and mark down that you booked an appointment. You know, when you're showing, when you meet them, you have to mark down that you met them, right? They want you to track the whole progress of, of the lead. Um, and one of the things he said, the way he phrased it was, you know, you need to get credit for the work that you're doing. He said, that's the biggest problem that you're going to have with your team and with most real estate agents is they don't track, they don't track anything, right? They don't, they don't put notes in the system or they don't update the statuses or they don't really go, go deep with, with their CRM and stuff like that. Um, he goes, but if, if you're not tracking or you're not reporting your numbers, you're not giving yourself credit for your work. Right. And I think we can apply that to not only tracking, but we can also apply that to putting ourselves out there in the real world. Right. Like we're all working hard. We're all busting our ass. We're all closing deals. We're all doing stuff like that. But are you showcasing yourself to the world? Are you giving yourself credit for everything that you're doing? Right. You can't be a secret agent. Right. If no one knows what you're doing, how can you expect to get the rewards that come with, with all of that hard work that you're doing, right? If no one knows about it, you know? So that, that really stood out to me and it's, 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 I'm gonna keep using that, you know, when, when, when people are, are not wanting to post on social media or not wanting to track their numbers or whatever, it's like, hey, we know you're working hard, but give yourself some credit, show your work, you know? Show us that you're working hard. So I don't know, I, I like that, what he, what he talked about yesterday. 
And it was good, Enrique, because again, you know, we're, we're so on our guys or on our team to track, but the way he phrased it was more like, hey, give yourself that credit versus, hey, track, make sure you track your numbers, right? So I think that, that just that, that, because I caught that same thing. When he said that, I'm like, that, that's gold because we have that, we have that struggle with our team to, um, to encourage them to track. So that's just another way to encourage them to, to get that credit for their work. So yeah, I like that. And I think it's reframing your mindset around tracking. Like if you're not comfortable with posting on social media or you, you find yourself having a hard time tracking, it's just reframing your mindset, right? When you look at something as a chore or like, I have to do this, right? Or like, oh, I need to track, this sucks. Then yeah, you're, you're already going into, into it with that attitude and you're, and you're not gonna do it. But if you reframe your mindset, it was like, no, I'm working hard. I need to get credit for my work, right? Then hopefully you're gonna see it in a different light and it'll encourage you to, to follow through and, and make it happen. Good stuff, guys. Um, let's move on. N next topic. What else you guys got? Tell me uh, what's a struggle you're having in your business or what's something that's working really well? Or what's something you want to learn more about? I think uh, personally, I've been struggling getting some escrows. Um, I think the market has been really, really, really tough. And it's funny, it seems like it's letting up a little bit in some areas. I mean, um, I was writing an offer in Los Banos the other day and the agent on the market eight days. And she's like, you know what? Like ask for some credit, like whatever you guys need, let's make it happen. But this house was really nice and Los Banos has been really hot. So in other areas as well, seems like it's really easing up. I don't know how it is in the Bay Area. I know a lot of you guys are in the Bay Area, but here in the Valley, some areas are letting up. I mean, we went from homes in Modesto getting 20, 25, 30 offers to 10, 12 offers, which is still crazy, but it's a huge difference between where we were at to where we are now. Um, seen a lot of back on the markets, seen a lot of price increases. And seen a lot more inventory, which is very exciting for a lot of buyers I have, because that means that you know we have options and we're able to get into contract now a lot easier. So that's the only thing I, I was struggling with, but I think the rest of the month and, and this following month is going to really clear that up. Yeah, I'm, we're seeing that as well here in the Bay Area. Um, I, I think it's kind of hit or miss. It's it hit or miss, and it depends on the property as well, because like we have a property in East San Jose. Listed it at seven ninety nine. We got thirty three offers, and it's yeah. Sold you're right. It's sold for a million. I just wrote an offer. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. Yeah, I just wrote an offer in Fresno, and I don't know if any of you are familiar with Fresno, but Fresno, if you're familiar with Stockton, that's what Fresno is like. You know, Fresno's pretty rough. There's a lot of areas that are rough. This house I wrote on was in a really rough area, in my opinion, and. It was listed at 300 and had 23 offers and they up 23 grand over asking, which it's like you would never imagine, especially in the area. But then I have homes in Modesto that aren't giving that anymore. So you're right. Some areas are still weird and hot. Yeah. I, so what do you think it is? Because, you know, we're, we're kind of hearing that and, and stuff like that. And I think there's also we got to differentiate, you know, what it feels like to what's actually real. Right. Like what happens is as soon as like some properties get less offers, people start putting that message out there and then it kind of trickles. And then now all of a sudden the market shifted and then it's going to crash mm -hmm. again. Right. So it, it it's kind of, you got to think of... in, in my areas, we have so many new developments um, going on in Fresno. I mean, there's like, there's like seven builders in Fresno right now. Right. So from Fresno all the way up here, we have so many new developments all the way into Modesto. So we're seeing a lot of new construction. People are like, well, why am I going to pay this much for this home that's a resale when I have time to wait? I'm already renting and buy this brand new house and I just have to wait six, seven months for it. So we're seeing some of that. I think um, I think a lot of it is also the fact that kids are out of school. Everybody's allowed to travel again. I mean, I have a lot of clients right now. They're like, oh yeah, we're on vacation. Like, don't even like, we don't even have time right now. So maybe that's part of it, but it just... I mean, it's kind of exciting to see a more stable market, although who knows what it'll look like in a few months. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's true. I think the traveling also is, is, is impacting it. Right. It's, it's a shift of focus, right. Distractions like, Hey, now we get to travel. Yeah. We've been stuck in our house 
you know, now we're out eating at restaurants, you know, like normal and going to the mall and going to the movies, just the simple, the simple things where it's like, all right, we're going to enjoy life a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. What are you seeing, Jose, like in, in your areas? Yeah, a little bit of um, more inventory on the market and uh, yeah, less some of the buyers, yeah, a little bit less interested because, yeah, everyone is out and about, especially on the weekends. Um, so, yeah, we are seeing that. So, I, you know, a couple of months ago, I, I was, you know, buyers that we had, I was kind of hesitant, like, I don't know if this is the right market for you to, to dive in and try to, to buy something. <clears throat> but right now, it just kind of feels like, like we have a chance, right? We have a chance for our buyers to, to go in, um, maybe write an offer that has maybe a, a contingency in it somewhere uh like some of the uh, the escrows we're in they they have a contingency in there um and that was maybe because we didn't get you know 30 offers on it but we got you know five or six offers so um but i am kind of starting to see where it's getting a little bit easier for for buyers to get in but it's still i would say still a seller's market um where if you got something on out on the market you price it right and you market it correctly, you're going to get a buyer for it, for sure. Yeah. Now, how do we use that information, right, to our advantage? I mean, because whatever side of the coin we're on, right, like you can phrase that in any sort of way, right? So like you can tell your buyers, hey, yeah, we're not getting as many offers. So now is a great time, you know, for you to get in and, and not compete with as many people. Or maybe you're talking to sellers. It's like, hey, the market may be slowing down, so you may want to sell now because in six months the property values, you know, whatever, right? Like you can kind of spin it or phrase it in any sort of way because we don't really have a crystal ball, right? We just know what's happening like today. I know Blanca mentioned that to me as well yesterday, right? That she felt a little bit of a shift. But what I'm getting, yeah. what I'm thinking is. If we got 30 offers, now we're getting 20. Yeah, there's still slightly a shift, but it's still a seller's market, right? Yeah. Or if you went from 20 offers to 10, right? But I guess I guess there is some some light at the end of the tunnel for some of those buyers that have been, you know, having struggle getting getting into property, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I know Blanca mentioned it to me yesterday as well that she felt a little bit of a, a change. Yeah, um, just to chime in on that a little bit, um, those two buyers that I was working with, it wasn't like a slam dunk, but we weren't competing with 10 plus offers. In both of those scenarios, we competed with four. So um, we were still in competition. We still needed to be a little aggressive, but I definitely am seeing a little bit of a change. And I, I also think it's because of the season. It's summertime. A lot of people are traveling. The focus has shifted a little bit where it's more like, hey, let's plan a vacation. Let's enjoy ourselves or let's be out kind of like what Enrique said. But another factor too, I think is location, location and condition of the home. That's really going to start playing um, game in this market, mm -hmm. whether it's a turnkey, whether the schools are good, that's really going to be more still of the pop popular properties. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a difference between data and, and getting that feeling mm -hmm. because I have I have that same feeling too. Yeah. The same exact things happen. If you look at the data, the data is totally different from what what, uh, what we feel, right? But we got to remember we're in this we're in this business 24 seven, right? So our ear is a lot closer to the ground than 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 the majority of you know the masses out there, right? And yes, homes are still selling, but I have a hot home right now in, in Morgan Hill. Both all my homes right now. Uh, but one, you know, one in Morgan Hill, and I got no offers, right? You know, so I ended up getting fourteen people running through it, and, and uh, for the whole weekend, and you know, I got an immaculate home. So, um, you know, is something happening? Something is definitely happening. Mm -hmm. You know, um, did I get an offer? I got one offer coming in from that place, but you know, it's not like where it's not. I don't have the leverage on my end to start driving these prices up. I'm going to, but there is something happening. There's definitely something happening. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, contingent, they're starting to open up a lot more, which is great. Mm -hmm. Right. There's not no more, you know, uh, contingent offers are getting accepted a lot more. So, mm -hmm. but home is still, it's still a sales market. Home still, uh, um, homes are still getting sold. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I heard somewhere guys, like there was still like some stat where like the amount of inventory across the nation 
like from a couple of years ago to now, I forgot where I saw this. It was like, it was something like 4 million. I don't remember exactly, but there was like 4 million homes for sale at one point. And then like in this last year, there was only like 1.5 million homes for sale across the nation. Right. Like, so overall, just in the whole entire nation, the inventory is just, it's just down. Right. There's just not a lot of homes for sale, which is, you know, driving up the prices and then plus the low interest rates. Now, um, while we're on that, how are the interest rates doing, um, Jason? What, what have you seen? Yeah, I mean, we're still seeing rates below 3%. So rates are still, they're still really, really good. I mean, they slightly have gone up. You know, we were probably getting in the, in the mid twos, but now we're probably in the high twos, which again, I mean, anything even in the low threes, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's cheap money, really, really yeah. inexpensive. So again, for people that want to refi or purchase, there's, there's definitely offer opportunity. Um, what, one thing that I, that I want to kind of understand, I don't know if anyone has any insight on this, but even for new, new builds, because of, um, because material has gone up so much. So have you seen some of the, the, the builders maybe pulling back from building right now? Right. I, I know, you know, I know um, Alfredo mentioned that, you know, there's, there's a few builders out where he's at, but I'm, I'm kind of seeing, is that going to be, you know, there's a few things that can shift, right? We, the, the builders can stop building, rates can go up. There's certain things that kind of can, can change the market. So my thinking is, you know, th those are the, you know, if, the builders stop building or put a hold on it because of the cost of material that may that may even increase you know some stuff in the market as well. The 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 matures are going down now. They're plummeting now. They're actually plummeting really fast. So yeah, um, wasn't there an article that yeah. is down like forty seven percent? Yeah, the cost of material is no longer the issue. Right? It's just, it's just oh, now right. that the amount of demand that 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 uh, housing or building are just not happening, right? Um, I think the bigger thing that's going to affect us, I, I'm, what's your name, buddy? It's uh, Alfredo. Alfredo, I think probably, I heard like Los Banos. I know a lot of the new builds here are not paying any more commission. They're, even Lennar and Gilroy isn't paying any yeah. more commission. They did away yeah. with it. They're done with it. No, yeah. we're here. Yeah. Hit. So we're going to take from new builds, right? I mean, yeah. if we have that client that that's only wants to look at new builds, we're, we're, that's the biggest, that's our biggest obstacle. And I think it started off like in Los Banos and it started kind of creeping up. It finally hit Gilroy. Hollister um, too. Yeah, well, Hollister, Hollister started going up too. a little bit north to Gilroy. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, there's a what's here. There's a development going up in Riverbank. They're offering a five hundred dollar co op. Like it's not even yeah. worth our time to to go sign documents. Yeah. So that's Darn. that's where that and they haven't even started. Yeah. yeah, that's the bigger thing. I think that's the bigger issue with new builds is just dealing now with with these non co op paying. Because yeah. the cost of material ain't no more. It's just now these guys have a have have inventory. They know there's a, there's a huge supply of buyers, and they re, they don't need us, yeah. right? So they're they're they now cut the commissions on the majority of all of them. Tracy's not doing it, you know. Some of these outer skirt uh, towns are not are not doing it. Here they're still doing it, but the outer skirt ones are not. Do we think that will, I mean, impact the amount of people going? go into the new builds i mean because if realtors are not pushing them or realtors are still steering them a different way um because of the commissions or is it like they're going to go anyways right if someone wants a new build they're going to go get a new build yeah, yeah. The, the problem is i don't even think that i don't think it's going to be it's more that uh but there's no freaking inventory even if they want to go in there by themselves there's nothing there yeah. you know what i mean you got river river island that has a four-year wait list you know what i mean yeah. so even if they want to jump in they can't jump in yeah. Right. So I, I would say maybe what 20 people are yeah. lucky enough to get the house. It's going to be a matter of preference. You know, what do they really want? Do they want a new build? Do they want to get in a home soon? Or, you know, and like Rob said, it's probably like a handful of people. Yeah. Yeah. And new builds have been having so much delays. I have a new build in Manteca that's been pushed back three months now. Yeah. And yeah. we were supposed to close next week on Tuesday. We just got notified that we're not closed until 28th. Like it's been insane. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. we just got to roll with the punches guys. Um, there's going to be people who want a house now. There's going to be people who want to, who are fine with waiting, you know? So I think it's just a matter of educating, you know, and really finding out what's important to your clients. Um, mm -hmm. Because we still have the advantage, right? Like whatever inventory we can find right now, it's available right now. Right. There's, 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 uh, there's going to be hurdles on both sides, new builds and on, 
on resale. So I think right. we just gotta we just gotta educate the client. Um, have any of you guys had any luck with um, having the client pay you a commission if the builder is not offering anything? I have um, a, a client right now that we actually got in a contract on a new build on Friday up in Rockland. Um, but we had looked at other at other um, new developments before and he was saying, you know, if we don't, if they're not paying out a commission, like I'll pay you something. And, but you know, most of, most of them were paying out a co-op. So, uh, but that one, you know, just on that subject of new builds, he's been waiting, I think since January for this place in Rockland. Uh, back then the home prices were about 1.1 million. And now we just got a contract at 1.595. So in a matter of like a span of like six months, it went up about $400,000. And so they were had to be put on this VIP list. So we went, were there Friday, you know, waiting in line and they only released six properties. So wow. we were like the, the fifth ones in line. He didn't get the exact model he wanted, but he got a, a similar one. Yeah. It's not like these guys are like releasing like, hundreds of homes at a time they're doing like no. handfuls it's the most stupidest thing ever it's like five homes at a time it pisses everybody off well, yeah yeah it was it was the six homes yeah, yeah. It's just ridiculous they're that, doing like an exclusive elite vip get in yeah. <laughs> type of advertising yeah. and, let, and let then, me ask you something jose did you uh, did you did you set up your uh did you set up your buyer and tell them hey listen these new builds are not paying commission there may be a possibility where I'm not paying. Is that how the whole conversation started? Yeah, when we were out looking at some new builds in Orinda, uh, there was a, we just got into, into the conversation. Him asking like, well, "Are they going to build? Are they going to pay you? Because you're out here showing us, you know, these these new builds." And then we just got into the conversation, just saying, "Yeah, you know, I have to come with you guys the first time you look at it, so I can get registered and put my name in there." And, and then he said, well, you know, if they don't, I'm, I'm willing to, to pay you something if, if they don't want to pay you out. So I said, yeah, you know, as of right now, don't worry about it because they are paying out a, a co-op. Um, so that's kind of how that conversation okay. started. But with the, uh, the builder, this builder is releasing like six houses at a time. We were sat in there with the, the salesperson and she said, okay, we have these six right now. We don't know when these other ones are going to come out but they're most likely going to be a higher price point. So, you yeah. know, either get whatever's left left here. You know, it's not the exact model that you want, but just get one of these two because then we're going to release more in maybe a couple of weeks, And but we don't know which ones and we don't know, you know, the price is going to be significantly higher because the what they're doing is they're putting, they're selling the lots for a higher premium. Like the, yeah. right now they're like at 375000 yeah. And she's saying, well, they're going to be at like 425 or more on the next, on the next round that we're releasing. So oh, that's, yeah, it's frustrating. Yeah, it's it's frustrating trying to figure out like how, how these new builds are going to work. Yeah. Even the price you they give you are outdated. You know, you look at the price, it's like, oh, okay, these are good. He goes, no, nope, actually we don't know how much they're going to be. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's like whatever they tell you like day, like here's a sheet with the price list, yeah. like that day, yeah. that's what it's going to be. No. Yeah. yeah. No. You know, what's something interesting, guys, that I wanted to point out was, you know, how a lot of people were moving like to Texas. Um, I saw something where they're saying like um, it's yeah. they were moving to Texas because you can go out and buy a cheaper home out there. But now the prices have gone up so much where you're not even really saving money by moving to Texas because the property taxes are like three times as much as California. I don't think you have state tax um, in Texas but you got three times as much property tax and the property values have gone up so much because of a lot of people from California and other states going to Texas. So they're saying it's, it's not, it's not uh, a yeah. lot of people yeah. aren't moving out of state anymore. Like, like we, like we saw before. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I would probably say what 90, 90%, 95% of our sellers are, are getting out of here. I, I think I finally, my Morgan Hill one is the only one that's probably staying around. That's the only one that I've had a listing so far <laughs> that's staying in town. So it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. We're just uh, educating ourselves on, on what's actually happening and being able to convey that, you know, uh -huh. to the client. Um, all right, guys, good stuff. But, uh, anything else? What else, what else is on your mind today? Um, any topics you want to cover? Any things that, 
you want some training on or discussion on? So I've been uh, struggling with like content, I would say, like, I feel like I've done a few different videos and I'm sure there's like a lot of things I could choose from, but one thing that um, Kevin Cruz's team did um, up in Daly City is that they did like a content calendar, right, for their team. And then they like challenged, he challenged his team with this content calendar, but um, I just don't know where to find it. Like he put it out there and then I think they took it down and then they started posting and stuff like that. But I think it'd be cool if like we, we can have like a content calendar and kind of just kind of brainstorm something together as a team just to kind of like help us come up with that con ideas for content. But, and it, it, like, I think with them, they didn't do videos every day. They did like a video on this day and then a certain thing on this day and a certain thing on this day. Like, so I think that would help me out if we could brainstorm as a team uh, for content ideas and stuff like that. I actually think I screenshotted that. So I might have it in my phone somewhere I could send it to you. So I remember seeing that and I thought that was cool. It was like a content challenge for the team. But, send it to, uh, go ahead. Send it to the Slack. Yeah, I'll send it to you guys in Slack. Um, but so I think the other thing, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no. One thing that we, we were on that, that clubhouse and kind of stuck in my mind was when the guy was talking about like the content he posts, it's just basically his day to day, you know, like any scenario that comes up that during that day, during that, you know, that week, whatever it is, he just immediately posts that content. Right. And he even said, he goes like this, similar to the platform we're looking at right now. He's like, listen, I'm going to make a video on how I post my content. And it's basically, you know, whatever, you know, whatever is happening, I just kind of jump on there. You know, whether you're dealing with a buyer situation, a seller situation, whether, you know, it's, it's a, a, an issue with escrow, an issue with appraisal. It's just that is the raw stuff that people want to see. You know, obviously, you can always just Google, you know, the top 15 videos on, 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 on uh, real estate. But I think that to me was it was pretty it was pretty cool because you're getting a real scenario of what's happening. Right. And I think we all we all have that. And sometimes it, it's just we just need to share that situation. So that was a huge takeaway. This, this came from a, a few months back on that, on that, um, what was it? Uh, the clubhouse. So definitely, definitely just kind of using that, I think would definitely help, Urban. I'm trying to find that guy. I remember that guy, I actually follow him. I just forgot what his name is, but he puts out a lot of content. He's based out of Canada. Um, I'll find it, I'll, I'll have to look through my stuff and, and send it to you, but he just uh what he does is he just repurposes a lot of his content as well so he'll record like a long video or some sort of discussion and then he'll chop it up into pieces and then he'll make a reel out of it he'll make a youtube video out of it he'll make a story out of it he'll make a photo like uh, if there was like a really good quote that he said or that he hit he'll make some sort of like post you know with the photo with the quote so i think that's that's the other thing too um you got to look at it from two perspectives, right? Like what's the topic you're going to create content on? And then also how do you milk that content as much as possible? Because people's attention spans are really short, right? Like if you post a video, Herbin, today, um, I'm going to watch that video. I might not even watch the whole video, right? And then I'm going to move on. But if you take that same video and you chop it up into pieces or you, make, you, you really milk it or you put it on different platforms, now you're getting more use out of that same, you know, two or three minute video that you did, right? So I would, um, I would challenge you and, and anybody else to try to get more creative with the content you already have. Like go back to your videos and maybe chop up some pieces of your old videos down and put those up as clips, right? Um, you yeah, know, so I think like, my biggest challenge too is I guess editing those things. Like I hate doing that. That's my laundry right there. I don't want to do my own laundry. So I got to find some Kate or something that lives on TikTok or something. They could do it. Maybe my little sister. I don't know. But that's the part that I hate. I don't mind making the video. I just hate the chopping it up and all this stuff. So that's I guess that's another challenge. <laughs> 
Yeah. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll try that out. I, I remember that on uh, Clubhouse too. I just completely forgot about it. So thank you. I'll write it down. So try and, I mean, use one of those apps, bro. There's a lot of apps on your phone that you can use that does a lot of the work for you. You just got to find the little sections that you want to work with. Um, so I think that's, you know, it doesn't, there's different levels, right? Like in the beginning, just get stuff out there. I would just get stuff out there. And then as you go, you can invest more time or money or energy into making the quality better. But most of our iPhones or whatever phone you have takes really good video um, just, just off the phone, you know? Um, the other thing too, guys, is, is a really good source for content is what's happening today. Like you said, in your day, maybe what's your, what's, you know, what came up today or just Googling um, frequently asked questions, right? Frequently asked questions for home buying, frequently asked questions for home selling, frequently asked questions for mortgages. Um, if you just Google that, you're going to probably get like a thousand different articles or different websites where there's the frequently asked questions. And all you got to do is just copy those and put it into your own words. Um, and, you know, I think the other challenge is how do you, how do you be creative, right? Because there's an entertainment factor also to your videos, right? Like you can just put out content, which is great. But if you want people to consistently watch your stuff, you have to make it entertaining, right? Or you have to like put your own flavor to it or maybe throw some music on it or do something that's going to get people more engaged. Um, I think that's the next level, right? If you're already putting out stuff, get creative, you know, use reels, use whatever, you know, the IG stories, all that stuff, emojis, make it funny. Um, come up with a catchphrase. Um, I like what Emmanuel did the deal of the week. That last one, did you guys, I don't know if you guys saw that, but the guy on our team, Emmanuel, he did some, a little interview called deal of the week and it was him and another agent from our team it's and they just basically talked about um, a recent deal that they got their client you know what how much he bought it for why he picked that property what he liked about it where the property was located what the payments would be on something like that um i thought that was really cool that was kind of outside of the box and um i, th I thought it was pretty good How are we doing on time here? All right, we got a few more minutes, guys, and then we'll we'll get this wrapped up. What other questions? Um, questions, comments, anything working well? Anything you're you're struggling with? Let me ask you guys this: um, What do you think is what's the next level for you, right? Like what's the next level for you in your business? Um, you know, like where are you at right now? And what do you think is the next level? Or what do you think you have to do to take your business to the next level? I like that. Or even, or, or even like, where do you see yourself in six months with your business? Right. Yeah, where would you like to see yourself in six months, in a year? in two years and three years from now, you know, I know this is kind of a general thing and it might be different for everyone, but I think it's important to have some sort of vision of where you want your business to go. Right. And it, depending on where you're at and, and your experience level, if you don't have a, a roadmap or you don't have, you know, something you're looking forward to, how do you know where your destination is? Yeah, I would say for me is delegating more getting more help and trying to duplicate myself to, to help grow the business. So instead of, you know, having five listings, have 10 or 15 listings at a time or something like that. Um, so for me, definitely um, delegating more, getting an assistant and maybe growing our team with a, a true buyer's agent and maybe another uh, listing agent as well, but definitely in the next six months going that way. Got it. I remember we talked before about you said you had some agents on your team who were kind of doing a couple of different roles and you were kind of trying to figure out getting an assistant. Where are you where are you at with that? Or did you make any changes since that that conversation that we had a few weeks back? Yeah, the we had a couple of, of in, you know, they said they were interns and are looking to get their, their license, but they've somehow 
you know, like I think we've, we've talked before, they kind of maybe have fired themselves. You know, they haven't been, you know, doing things or, or that kind of thing. So, but we do have a, uh, a buyer's agent right now that he's calling, we have leads, he's been calling them, he's updating them, he's putting them into our CRM. So he's just, you know, right now just building up the momentum and, you know, just getting ready to get some appointments, confirm some appointments and go out with him on some of those appointments. So we have, so we have that like one probably pretty good buyer's agent that's getting on track and doing things. Uh, as far as an assistant, yeah, I've been talking to our office manager and some other uh, TC people that we have in the office to kind of see if there's anyone out there. And I think we, Jason has spoke about it before, not someone that wants to become an, a real estate agent and wants to help out, but someone that just wants to be in that assistant type of role and has like a proven track record to do that. So the, the hunt is still on for that, but also, you know, getting some of these leads given to this buyer's agent and, and him kind of putting him into our CRM and getting them uh, nice and, and organized in there. Yeah, I think, I think that's a crucial hire for you, man. I, since we've, we've talked a few times and I've kind of heard, you know, some of the stuff that's going on in your business, I think that's, that's a crucial hire. You, it's almost like you can't afford to not have an assistant right now. It's, it's costing you money to not have an assistant. Um, what I would look at is I would maybe, I don't know if you have a TC or if there's TCs you can contact who might be able to help you and be your assistant as well. Um, you know, or if you have the budget to just hire someone, you know, maybe start them off as part-time and then graduate them to full-time. It just really depends what kind of budget you're working with. The ultimate, you know, goal would be you hire someone full-time and, and you just get them trained and, and train them how you want, how you, you know, what you want them to do. And you may not even have to, it depends on their experience, right? Like if it's someone who's already experienced and kicking ass, you're going to have to pay them more. Um, if it's someone that you're going to have to groom more or more entry level, you're going to spend more time training them, but you'll probably pay them less um, and you can graduate them. So just really, it really depends on, on how you want to handle that. Um, but I would, I would hire someone full-time because if you hire someone part-time, um, part-time people are always looking for other options, right? right yeah. You'll get part-time effort maybe. Exactly. Right. Or if it's their part-time gig and then maybe they got something else going, or if a good opportunity pops up, they may leave. And then you spent all that time training them, you know, just for them to leave. Right. Right. So I would um, invest in, in a full-time agent, a uh, full-time assistant, if I were you, um, you know, and, and it may be, you got to think of it as like, I'm planning for the future of my business. Maybe it's, it's not necessarily right now that you're going to need full-time, but you know, as you get busier, you're going to need full-time. So you're kind of hiring for the future. If, if you're really trying to grow your business. Right. Uh, you know, so that's, that's just some advice I can give you. And, and Enrique, there, there's like a term, right? I mean, it's kind of like you want to hire so that you can grow. Right. I mean, I, I, I've heard this before where, it's like, well, you know, I'm kind of right there. I don't know if I need a full-time assistant or, you know, a part, you know, it's kind of like, you know what, hire, hire that full-time person. And that's going to also hold yourself accountable to force you to force you to grow, force you to find more opportunity, force you to find roles for that, that full-time assistant. I know for, for me, you know, what, what, what has helped my business is that again, you know, it's just, it's just that I have this team counting on me. And then again, I feel an obligation to get this team paid. I feel an obligation if I do hire someone, I want to I want to make sure I provide work for them because I don't just want to pay someone to be here, right? So again, I think getting in that mindset of just you know making a list of everything that you know you can hire someone for, and, and I think Jose, you know, we've talked, and I think you're at a place where you need someone full time, and it's just just kind of letting go so that you can start working on other parts of your business. And it's just making that decision. But the hard part is finding the right person, right? And, and I think that's definitely take your time on finding the right person, but be be active on doing so. Yep. Good stuff, guys. Um, let's get from somebody else. 
Tanya, I know you're uh, listening in. I haven't heard from you. Do you want to chime in? Where do you, where are you at with your business? Where do you want to be in six months, a year? If you're able to chime in. How about anybody else? Uh, Blanca, Rob, Mauricio, where do you see yourself? Where do you want to see yourself in the next six um, months to a year? I can go. So, I mean, within the next six months to the year, I definitely see myself in a, a more uh, seniority level in our team. Um, I've been doing a lot of basic, because I know uh, Jason preaches this a lot. I just work on a few things, you know, pick two or three things that you really want to work on and just focus on those. Uh, I've been doing that and it's been really working. So definitely just leveling up within the team um, and then having that position of seniority uh, and then being able to run my own show aside from, you know, building my own business and just leveling up with that as well. Awesome. Awesome, man. What do you, um, you know, I know on our team, we have certain things you got to do, but what do you, is there anything you feel you got to do personally to, you know, is it just focusing on a few things? Is, is, there, is there anything you got to change or add to what you're doing you think to kind of take you to the next level? Um, definitely. I mean, it's a lot to me. It's like an everyday thing. So definitely, you know, make sure that I'm fully there, like, you know, my health, even my sleep schedule, everything there. And then, you know, being fully involved and, and really putting in all the work during those hours of like call session. Um, also just observing the team leaders and seeing how they're running shows and what they're doing um, and just kind of observing and, and just putting in the work really and being more, more um, intentional with the work. You know, not just showing up to show up and then spending time there talking, you know, every 20 minutes, every 30 minutes, like really just showing up, doing the morning huddle, getting that out of the way and jumping on the calls and calling the whole time. And yeah. just, just being very, very intentional, very, very, you know, and it, I mean, the motivation doesn't have to be there. There are times where I'm not motivated, but the whole thing is to be intentional. And I think the intention pushes motivation out of the way and just getting it done. Um, and I mean, this is kind of like a numbers game or, I mean, it is a numbers game and, you know, sometimes you have to hit a lot of numbers before you get one or two. Sometimes, you know, the first two hit, but my thought is just, you know, if it's not hitting and I still have to create those numbers. So that's, uh, I just really been, uh, vamping up the whole, the whole intention about it and really, uh, also kind of working on, on, uh, role-playing as well. Still kind of refreshing my role-playing game and all that. I think that's good. I like, I like that you're talking about being intentional because, you know, it's, especially on our, it's easy to get distracted, right? As we have a lot of people on our team and there's a lot of energy and there's so many things happening at once, but yeah, you're right. You know, when you do come into the office, whether you're at home or whether you go into your office or whatever you're doing, um, we got to be committed to our commitments, right? Like if you committed to make calls for two hours, you have to be committed to that. Like, there shouldn't be no ifs, ands, or buts. Like if I said I'm going to make calls and I said I'm going to do this, like that's that's the thing you got to be most committed to, right? It's like you said, it's it's being intentional. Um, because if you don't do that, then then what do you got? You know, you don't got anything, right? If you can't honor what you said you're going to do, right? Yeah. yeah. And and I made a commitment to Jason when I and I, I brought this up a couple sessions ago where I made a commitment to Jason. I was like, bro, like you know, check on me or whatever. But even if you don't check on me, I have to check myself. So literally yeah. like every morning I wake up, I'm like, fucking J Jason needs me to get some <laughs> stuff done. So I, I gotta, you know, even if it's from home or at the office, like my point is to be intentional with all my calls, all my prospecting. Um, and then I think uh, you you brought this up, Keeks, uh, or Nuke, um, where sometimes like you're doing everything you possibly can, like literally, like there's nothing else you can do. And just like luck isn't on your side. But um, like I said, it's a numbers game to me. So even if nothing's hitting, I've done it before where I'm just hitting like, you know, two or 3000 calls and I finally get a listing, <laughs> but it was like two or 3000 calls of like, man, I should just quit at a thousand ninety nine or 2099 <laughs> or whatever. And you never know. So I definitely put a lot of, you know, the nine to well, like nine thirty to twelve, calling, calling, texting, emailing, any type of follow up, 
I'm doing it. Any type of just tagging that person, keeping them top of mind. Um, and then I, I did speak to some of my lenders and like a lot of the stuff I do have, it's just like, for some reason they're not ready or they need a little bit more time or just time isn't really with them. Um, and then even with Blanca, you know, sometimes, you know, the seller's just so underwater that they can't even sell. It just makes more sense for them to rent. Yeah. And I mean, I, it's, it's not discouraging. I know what I signed up for. Um, and I'm just, every day is a new day and I owe Jason a certain amount of calls. I owe Jason a certain amount of appointments and I need to get those done. So I'm just taking it day by day as of now. And then, you know, on my personal life, just focusing on that and make sure like I'm good, like physically, mentally, you know, eating the right things. Cause even that can affect me or throw me off, but just kind of, so six months from now, as I'm practicing this today, there will yep. be a change. There will be a difference. Um, I will be at that seniority level comfortably where I'm like, job, I, know, I know I'm here. I know I deserve this and I know why I'm here and who else I have to lead. So there we go. There we go, bro. Right on, bro. Job. Thank you. <laughs> Sounds like, you know, sound like you know what you got to do, bro. It's just a matter of execution. And mm -hmm. just remember that the work you put in today is what's going to pay off in, in three months and six months, you mm -hmm. know, um, and that's, that's the game we're in guys. You know, a lot of times, we know we're grinding. We know we're working hard, but that's that's not gonna it's it's not gonna hit today. It's gonna pay off in the, in the next few months. Whatever success you're having today is a result of what you did in the past. You know, yeah. so because we're in the, we're in a, a business where you know it takes a few months to make things happen. You know, so just keep it going, keep pushing. You know, lean on people, hold yourself accountable. Use Jason, use us, you know, whoever it is, even use someone, you know, outside of the office, you know, like someone you're comfortable with that's non biased to you, right? In the business, right? And, um, you know, someone who's going to tell you, you know, what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, you know. So that's Jason all day. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and I thank him for that. And that's the way, like, I'd rather be coached that way than someone saying, it's okay, you know, but I'm like, nah, bro, you need to. Get it together. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. You All got right. it, Marty. You got it, brother. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let's take one more. Um, Blanca or Rob, let's take one more, and then we're going to wrap this up because we're coming up on time. What's What's next for you guys? Where you see yourself and where would you like to see yourself in the next six months, a year, two years? And don't think you can hide back there, Rob. We can see you. You're too big. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that um behind the scenes both of us we were like where do we want to see ourselves you know it's, per months? it's perfect to do it right now block up because this is being recorded so yeah. we can hold you guys accountable no 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 yeah and I think we have time for Enrique we have time for both of them right to 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 go ahead and answer that question huh. and I and I and I think for me um on the personal business level we've had so much change and we've now embraced this whole leadership you know situation where for me, it's been a little bit of a challenge because you get calls, texts, emails um, from the junior agents, and it's more like learning how to assist everybody and be there, but then again, also continue to stay focused on your business um, and not really kind of put it on the back burner. So in six months, I guess for me is just really, really honing in and having a seamless process on how I can do that. And then also is growing, continue to grow my volume, but not jeopardizing my service level. Because, you know, that can happen. And to me, that's really important. Um, not letting that happen. So, and then consistency. Consistency is key. I wrote it down. These are just like little reminder notes for me and some accountability. Even though we're in the senior leadership level, I think I still need to go back to having some kind of accountability. So back to basics for me. So from now in six months, it's just really having a clear roadmap, Enrique, like you said, of where I'm going and where I need to be. And if I fine tune it, it's going to happen. The work is going to show. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. If that made sense. <laughs> yeah, Blanca, and, and just, you know, one thing that you mentioned, consistency. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're at a senior level. I think that is just the foundation, yeah. the basics mm -hmm. to any success is just being ridiculously consistent, right? Mm -hmm. I like I like a few things, right? It's being ridiculously <laughs> consistent and intention, intention of what you're <laughs> gonna be doing, right? 
And, and again, and, and that is probably the one of the most difficult things for people to do is to be consistent, yeah. right? So right. again, right. I, I don't care what level we're at. I think that is going to be something we're going to continue to to embrace and be a foundation of, of any success. I agree. And the other thing to add, like you said, to increase your volume while not sacrificing your service is the only way to do that is to duplicate yourself, right? Because you can only work so many hours in the day. You can only come in so early. You can only yeah. stay so late. You can yeah. only, there's only seven days in the week. You have a family, you have personal life, you know, otherwise other stuff gets sacrificed, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so the the key thing, the key takeaway that I would say for you guys that are in leadership and, and kind of on, on that level is, is, what do I need to focus on every single day? What's the highest and best use of my time and everything else? How can I delegate that? How can I create, you know, use maybe other agents on the team for leverage, maybe delegate stuff to the admins, um, things of that sort, right? Here's the other thing you got to look at too. And I know we've talked about this is now, how do you do that in your personal life as well? Yeah. Right. Like today, I had to set up my mortgage payment, you know, on autopilot, um, you know, on auto pay, right? Um, raise your hand if you still pay your car payment or your mortgage payment by writing a check and sending it out in the mail. No. Okay. No more. Good. All right, good. No. Can I, sure. <laughs> but what are things that you do in your personal life? that you could be delegating to somebody else, right? Like we mm -hmm. talked about not doing your own laundry. We talked about like, because once you get to a certain point, you don't have any more time, right? Like you don't have time to no. do certain things. No. You know? mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the day, you have to make a choice on, do I wanna do this or do I want my time back so that I can do the things yeah. that I really wanna do, right? It's a choice, right? But the Medellin household has come a long way <laughs> in that in that sense. And it's true. It's like making the right decisions. And, you know, I wrote it down too, is what is the most, the best use of my time, personal and business. Yeah. So, yeah. I would look, I would look at both of those. And I, it's an audit for all of us, you know, even myself and everyone, right? It's like, what can I leverage in my business? What can I leverage in my personal life? you know, so that I get more time back. That's basically what we're doing. We're trading yep. time for dollars, you know, and we're trading time for our relationships and all those different things, right? Yep. So it's just, it's a mindset shift, right? It, people who are operating at a really high level, really successful entrepreneurs, like if you look at their day, they don't do a lot of things. There's only a handful of things that they actually do themselves. Everything else is handled by someone else, you know, and they pick and choose the, where they want to be. Yeah. It, it's, so, it's so crazy because I hate washing my car and getting gas. And the reason why I hate doing it is because it's a waste of my freaking time. And it's such a small task, right? And my wife will be pissed. She's like, you only got 15 miles on your car. You know, and my wife is so cool. She'll go take it and get it filled up for me. But I, it just... It's just that mindset is I don't feel, I feel like I have other things I could be doing. And it's such small guys. I mean, I'm just using it as an example, but it is such a tiny thing to put in gas or wash your car. No, and some people find and, that relaxing. No, and even when you're doing it, yeah, I don't find it relaxing because I know that when I'm doing it, I'm like, really? I'm freaking pumping gas right now when I need to go here and I need to go there and I need to take care of this. And that's when you're, that little downtime is when your brain's like on overload. <laughs> So I get it. <laughs> yep. Last yeah. one is Rob. Last one's Rob. Then we'll wrap Rob. it up. Got you, Rob. Um, and you can't piggyback off Blanca. So <laughs> you won't be using the word piggyback. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> what's the, so what's the, ask me the question again. In the next six months to a year, um, you know, or six months, a year, three years, where would you like to see yourself? in terms of your business, personal life, anything like that? What's the vision you have? You know, what's the goal you're shooting for just overall? Come Jan 1st of 2022, what's the difference? Where are you at? I think I've always talked about being just a uh, 
you know, more on the listing side for the longest, longest time. Okay. And uh, I think to me, the listing side has a lot more benefits where I'm able to buy time uh, on it. Um, you know, it, it just seems like it fits my lifestyle where I'm at right now, spending time with my family or just chilling or, you know what I mean? And, and still producing uh, real estate at a high level. And I think I would be the happiest guy on the listing side. I don't know. I just feel like I have everything that has going for a listing side. I just need to figure out how to get there sooner than later. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What do you think you need to do to focus more on the listing side? So one of the things that I'm really, and I'm just being honest, like, uh, you know, I'm here a lot, right? Um, we're here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and Thursday. what I noticed is Thursday. that if, and Thursdays, mm -hmm. that if I give these guys, in order for me to give these guys a lot of the effort and I see them taking, taking, uh, taking it in, right? Is if I'm always either on top of them or I mean, and not in a bad way, like I'm listening to their phone calls, I'm, I'm coaching them through the whole way. They seem to be getting the maximum amount from Rob that they can get, which is a huge benefit for the whole team. Mm -hmm. But what also lacks for me is my production nothing happens during that time. So I either have to make a decision, a conscious decision to either A, work on my production or B, focus on these guys, right? And I know that was some of the things that we were hearing from the past where, hey, it was cool before, but it was just it was busy, right? I think uh, Jason was always busy, right? So I think, uh, you know, trying to bring information and value at a high level to these guys where it actually works is, 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 is the part where uh, is, I'm finding it difficult. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Well, sounds good, man. I think, um, yeah, I think we could definitely carry that conversation offline and kind of figure out what sort of. I think what you said though, Rob, is doable. Right. And I, and I think right. like Enrique said, we, I, I, cause my mind just went, like, I know we can, I'm so excited about having this conversation offline where we're, we're going to, it's a little bit of a mind shift of what I know Enrique probably is feeling the same thing of things that you have things in front of you that can help you get to where you want to be at. If that is your goal, you have agents here that you can utilize and train to help you set some of those appointments. And we can go a lot deeper into it, Enrique. But I, I'm seeing so many opportunities if that's what you want to do. It's just now focusing your energy into the, the you know, the, the junior agents, the ISAs to help you get where you want to be at. Right. And again, yeah. we, we can definitely talk about this later. Good stuff, guys. Well, I think we're up on time, guys. 1115. Uh, that's going to conclude our 12th session, 12 week mastermind, real estate growth mastermind. We've done this 12 weeks in a row, which is awesome made a commitment to do that um i only missed one so thanks jason for back congratulations guys <laughs> congratulations to both of you for putting yeah. this together and having it and being consistent that's awesome thank you Bob. yeah, yeah and, and honest and great job to enrique you and this i know enrique enjoys doing this i know he enjoys giving back and so it is it is neat watching my partner for the last 15 years be in a position where we're at right now and he's able to do something he truly enjoys. So yeah. great job, Enrique. Thank you for putting this together. Awesome, brother. Good Thank job. You Thank you, guys. All right, guys, uh, that concludes it. Um, as always, pay it forward, help people out. If you learn anything good on these sessions, yeah. make, sure you, make sure you pass that info along. There's a lot of people who need some help and we'll see you guys soon. We'll, we'll put something else together. We've got to plan this out. Have a great week, guys. Right on, brother.